Hi, my name is Osman, I'm a photographer at Sonda Creative and today I want to talk about why a tilt shift lens is extremely important if you're an architectural photographer. One of the arguments that I tend to uh, hear or see online quite a lot is how you don't necessarily need to buy a tilt shift lens because you can do all of the corrections in post, which I disagree with. Now personally, I haven't done any actual comparisons between using Lightroom and Photoshop versus using a tilt shift lens, so right now my idea or my thoughts are just a hypothesis but today I'm in Leeds City Centre so we're going to test this theory and we're going to find out whether you can get away with just using Lightroom and Photoshop whether you can do it all in post or whether you do in fact need a tilt shift lens because there's just no way of getting around those distortions. So I've got the Canon 24 tilt shift attached to the 5DSR and we're going to take a couple of shots of Bridgewater Place which is that way and the first shot is going to be with the camera tilted up to try and get the whole building in the shot and then later on in Lightroom and Photoshop we, we're going to try and see how much of that we can correct and then compare that image to an image taken without any tilt applied on the camera but we're just going to shift the lens up to get that correct perspective. So uh, let's take a few shots and uh, see what kind of results we get. So here we have the first couple of images opened up in Lightroom and um, I've already applied the corrections to the images and from this distance can you tell which image is using what method because once I've applied the corrections honestly they look so similar. In a lot of situations you may not need to have a tilt shift lens because you can just correct it in post and it's, it does a pretty good job. There are a couple of differences. For one, the um, composition, the composition between the two is slightly different. So matching the composition is going to be quite different if you're uh, if you're trying to correct in post, if you're tilting the camera up and you're having to correct um, once you get into Lightroom or Photoshop, then composing your shot is going to be rather difficult. Second thing is that is quite a, uh, a noticeable loss in resolution. So the one which has been tilted has lost about almost half the resolution. We're looking at about from 50 megapixels, went down all the way to 28 megapixels. And uh, just going to show you what they are before and after. So this is the image where the tilt was applied, the one without the boat. And if I reset it, you'll see how much I've had to crop just to be able to get that similar perspective. And then if I go on to the other image, I've added a slight uh, adjustment, but it's minor at best. So the loss in resolution in this one is significantly lower than the one where I've had to correct quite heavily. So from the first test, it looks as though you may not need to have a tilt shift lens if you want to shoot architecture. Right, so on to the second comparison and uh, for this test we're going to see if you can shoot with a wider angle lens instead of a tilt shift lens. So in the last test we shot with the same lens, it was a 24mm and with that lens obviously if you are going to correct the verticals you have to crop in the image to get that effect. Instead what I'm thinking, what if you just use the wider angle lens, could that negate the need of a tilt shift lens? So the second test, I'm going to be shooting with the lower 12mm f2.8 which is an incredibly wide angle lens versus a 17mm tilt shift and the difference between 17mm and 12mm is very very significant or very noticeable I should say. So I'm going to take a couple of shots and of this building in front of me and uh, see if that is a method or that is a way of getting around having to buy tilt shift lenses. So quickly moving on to the second set of images and uh, these were of the KPMG building in Leeds. You can clearly tell which one was shot with which lens. This is obviously the 12mm and this is the 17 tilt shift. Once the corrections have been applied, the Lawa is doing pretty well. I mean the vertical lines look pretty good and you know the distortion is minimal in comparison to the 17 tilt shift. There is a difference in terms of composition and you do have a wider angle of view even though I've quite heavily cropped this image. So shooting with the 12, I mean the 12 millimeter lens is pretty wide, it's very wide actually compared to a 17mm lens but um, even after you've cropped this lens 
you still have a lot of the angle of view remaining so it can be an effective way of shooting architecture. The only major difference between both of these is the composition. Once again you can compose more effectively when you're not having to crop in post and uh, with the 17 tilt shift if you did want a little bit more of the uh, um, of, of the scene you can just shift the lens up down left or right and create a panorama with minimal to no distortions. So if we quickly go into the develop module and I can show you what this image looked like prior to correction you can see it's quite badly distorted the buildings look like they're falling backwards however as I mentioned applying corrections are pretty easy in Lightroom so shooting with a wider angle lens is an effective method for a lot of people if you're shooting architecture you don't necessarily need a tilt shift lens for every situation so for the final comparison, I wanted to see what kind of results you would get if you were to create some panoramas. With the tilt shift lens, it's really straightforward creating a panorama because you just shift the lens up and down or left and right and then stitch those images together and you get very minimal loss in detail and very minimal distortion. With um, a normal lens, you'd have to either move the tripod head or you know, you'd use like a special head or something just to be able to uh, get the different sections in. And um, with that method, you are probably gonna lose a lot of the angle of view, a lot of the resolution as well that you can, that you can achieve with the tilt of lens. So we're gonna take a couple of shots around City Square in Leeds and see what kind of results we get. And here we have the final set of images. These are the panoramas that I took with using both methods. So you can clearly see which one was, which, you know, which image you use what method. The one on the right, I was obviously moving the camera and the one on the left, I shifted the lens uh, from right to left. So these are horizontal panoramas. And the one where I was using the shift feature looks significantly better. I mean, you've got this massive weird curve coming into the image and there's no way that I could correct this in Lightroom and I, well, I have to take it into Photoshop to correct it effectively, but even when I took it into Photoshop, I just couldn't correct that properly. I, I, I found it extremely difficult. And when I did try and make any adjustments to this section, the rest of the image would start warping and distorting and it just didn't look right. So when you're doing panoramas, a tilt shift lens is definitely a much better option compared to moving the camera. Going into the develop module, if I hit the reset button on the uh, the shifted image, you can see that there is a minor change that I did, but this wasn't coming from the lens. This was something that I did to taste. The pavement does slope. That's just what it is. But I decided to uh, adjust that slightly to taste, but you can see that the vertical lines remain correct and true. Compare that to the uh, panorama. And if I hit the reset button, you'll notice that I had to crop in quite heavily. And even still, the distortions are very noticeable. Finally, we have the vertical panoramas where I shifted the lens up and uh, tilted the camera up. And here again, clear distance, cl clear differences between the two. Uh, this is corrected, by the way, in Lightroom as much as I can, but the vertical lines are still off. Whereas using the shift feature, the vertical lines are perfectly true. I've got the whole building plus the sky and there's very little to no distortion. Pavement is sloping. I decided to leave it in this one, but you can see the vertical lines are correct. This one, if I want to get the vertical lines correct, I mean, I've made adjustments to this already, but if I want to make any more further adjustments, I have to take it into Photoshop. And although I can correct the vertical lines, I'm having to crop in significantly. So I'm kind of left with just this section of the image over here. And uh, I mean, it says 201 megapixels, but honestly, I'm left with something like about uh, a 30 megapixel image, which is a far cry from the 93 megapixel image that I've got over here. Going into the develop module, if I hit the reset button, again, you can see vertical lines remain true. All I did was just crop in slightly to taste more than anything, but uh, you know, the shift features on the tilt shift lens are fantastic for panoramas. There's just no way that you can compete with that. Compare that to the uh, the uh, tilted cam, you know, where I move the camera. If I hit the reset button, you'll see how much I had to crop in just to get that section in to begin with. And then even then, I'm still left with a file that is quite heavily distorted. And again, if I take it into Photoshop, I can do more, but it's gonna crop even more from where we are right now. 
So ultimately, if you are going to be creating panoramas and you don't want any distortions, a tilt shift lens is going to be the absolute best option. There's just no way that you can correct properly or quickly, I should say, in post. So there you have it. That's how tilt shift lenses compare to correcting your images in post. And for the most part, the tools that you have available in Lightroom and Photoshop are actually pretty good. In fact, they're really good. The results that you can get are very, very similar to what you can achieve with a tilt shift lens. And for that reason, if you're not someone who shoots architecture for a living, then yeah, you probably don't need a tilt shift lens. It's not worth spending that kind of money for those kinds of lenses when you can just correct them in post. However, if you're a professional architectural photographer, as in this is your main source of income, this is your job, then yes, you absolutely need a tilt shift lens. There's just no way that you can compromise your images by having to correct in post. And this is not about resolution. In a lot of comparisons I've seen online, they all talk about things like, oh, you have to crop the image or you're gonna lose resolution. All of these points are minor points. I mean, they're Honestly, they don't really matter. Who cares if you've only been left with a 30 megapixel file from a 50 megapixel image? I mean, 30, 30 megapixels is still plenty for most people. The main reason why you need a tilt shift lens if you're an architectural photographer is composition. You may have noticed how throughout the video, I kept bringing up one point, and that is that composing your shot is difficult when you're not using a tilt shift lens because you don't know what you're gonna have to crop and what you're gonna lose and so on and so forth. So composing your shot is quite difficult when you're not using a tilt shift lens. And composition is the most important factor in photography. It is the most important factor in photography and compromising that one point is unacceptable. You simply cannot compromise your composition if you're doing this for a living, if this is your main job as an architectural photographer. So, as I said, if you're, a, if you're a professional architectural photographer, you absolutely need a tilt shift lens. There's just no way that you can compromise your composition. If you're not shooting architecture for a living, if you're just doing it for fun, then yeah, you could probably get away with just correcting things in post. Anyway, just wanna say thank you so much for watching my video. If you like this video, hit the like button, please subscribe, share this video with anyone that you think might find it interesting. And uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them below. Um, I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible and uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you.